Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about lifespan and schizophrenia and how you can improve your lifespan and how you can overcome some of the deficits in lifespan that are related to having schizophrenia. So we're going to do a PowerPoint. We're going to try something new today. I'll put the PowerPoint up beside me here and I'll put on my glasses and we'll get started. All right. So average lifespan in schizophrenia is on average 15 years less worldwide. And the range is 8 to 25 years uh, with an average loss of lifespan of 15 years. <clears throat> so breaking down some of the reasons uh, for this lifespan deficit, uh, smoking is the number one reason uh, for lost lifespan with an average loss of 4.8 years. Um, so that's uh, eight years are on average lost uh, with the average smoker, but 80% of schizophrenic smoke versus 20% of the regular population, which is a 60% difference. So there's 60% more smokers in the schizophrenia population than there is in the regular population which leads to the average 4.8 years lost from smoking. Suicide is the number two cause, of, unfortunately, for lost years, with 4.56 years lost. Uh, the average amount of years lost is 38 years, and 12% of schizophrenics commit suicide, which is uh, 20 times the regular population uh, at... Uh, 0.6 percent of uh, uh, normal people commit suicide. So it, uh, 12 percent, unfortunately, of schizophrenics will commit suicide. Another reason for the loss in um, lifespan is obesity and uh, weight, too much weight. So if you uh, are overweight, you on average lose two years. And if you're obese, you actually lose uh, five years on average if you're obese. Uh, so watching your weight is another way you can increase your lifespan. In fact, it's not even necessary to watch your weight exactly. Just living an active lifestyle will reduce a lot of that deficit. So these three things contribute to 11 0.36 years lost from smoking, suicide, and overweight, um, which is most of the 15 years lost, uh, which is the average lost year, life years uh, in total for schizophrenics. So we'll carry on here with some more uh, reasons why schizophrenics live less long. And here we go. We have inactivity. So inactivity not getting exercise, not moving naturally, not moving about, not uh, uh, just sitting around all day, uh, leads to a 30% increased risk of death um, class. Um, so there, the, there's a difference in lifespan between the lower class and the middle class. That average is 18.5% increase in, in risk of death if you are lower class compared to middle class. Now this number is actually double that. Uh, that's the average per person. Uh, if you're a man, you are more highly affected. So men, it is um, 37 percent. Uh, dec de decrease in lifespan from being lower class. And woman is half that of uh, men. So women have an average um, loss in lifespan of 9.25% um, um, from being lower class. So men are more highly affected by their class uh, in society in terms of their lifespan than women are. Uh, and that, that difference is double, which is interesting. Uh, social isolation. So social isolation 
uh, causes a 15, 50% increase uh, risk of death, uh, which is the same as a 15 cigarette a day habit. And I'm just going to quickly go through these reasons and then I will zoom back to the start and we'll have ways to mitigate some of these problems uh, a little bit later on. Uh, so schizophrenics are at uh, 3.5 times uh, standardized mortality ratio, SMR risk for all cause all causes of death. Um, and here we can see that cardiovascular disease is the biggest killer of schizophrenics according to this one study uh, in the USA, a study done in the USA. Um, uh, with 3.6 times uh, risk. Uh, so cardiovascular disease and cigarettes again are a big culprit. Uh, uh, if you smoke a lot of cigarettes that gives you five times the risk of uh, cardiovascular disease. Lung cancer again connected with smoking. Lung cancer is at 2.4 times risk. COPD, 9.7 times risk, that's trouble breathing, again connected with smoking. Accidents were also a big killer. So schizophrenics, uh, if they drive, they get in twice the number of accidents per mile driven, though they tend to drive less miles because uh, less sch schizophrenics tend to drive, but those who do are much more prone to get into accidents. Deaths from drug abuse are also a large killer. So diabetes risk is two to five times higher. Uh, the, for the risk for type two diabetes is two to five times higher in schizophrenics. Uh, that's uh, connected partially to the antipsychotic itself because those who do not take antipsychotics are only at a 1.3 to 1.6 increased risk of developing uh, type 2 diabetes. So a lot of that diabetes risk is connected to, um, uh, there, I just got to fix my screen here. Okay, screen's fixed. Okay, so the antipsychotics were a large uh, antipsychotics were a large uh, reason for the increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Um, the risk of dementia, so dementia uh, um, is uh, 2 to 20 times higher in schizophrenics than in general population. So 27% of people age 66, just over 65, um, 27% uh, of them will have dementia versus 1.3% uh, of the general population. And that actually uh, gets worse as you get older. At age 80, so once you hit age 80, the risk of dementia is 70% in uh, schizophrenics versus 10% in the general population. Again, smoking increases risk of dementia by uh, 30 to 75 percent. Okay, cardiac uh, autonomic neuropathy is at four times risk. This is basically a problem with uh, the neurons throughout your body um, and their communication with uh, your organs, etc. So 61 percent of uh, schizophrenics have this problem and it leads to a uh, 1.5 to 2.1 percent increased risk of death and some antipsychotics are worse for this than others my favorite antipsychotic abilify uh, araprozole <laughs> if i said that right um is uh, is uh less severe. So if you take aripiprozole, um, you have a, a much lower uh, risk of cardiac autonomic neuropathy 
than if you uh, take some of the other uh, antipsychotics. Uh, you are at four times risk for depression. So 24% um, of schizophrenics are depressed versus 7% of the general population. <laughs> and here is a, 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 you know, a, a somewhat annoying uh, consequence of having a schizophrenia, but an understandable one perhaps is uh, doctors are less likely to treat schizophrenics uh, for all medical issues. And this is related to doctors um, seeing a lot of patients who are kind of out of their mind, not thinking clearly and not uh, understanding uh, their illness or the source of their problems correctly, and maybe imagining an illness that they might not actually have. And as a consequence of this um, being uh, you know, a somewhat troublesome client to a doctor, uh, imagining illnesses and being a uh, less valuable member of society and uh, uh, doctors kind of subconsciously are less likely to treat schizophrenics for all causes. So you're 50% less likely to get a mammogram. Uh, so standard breast uh, cancer uh, um, treatment is fit, uh, diagnostics is 50% uh, less. Uh, so that's kind of an example of this uh, uh, stigma associated with having schizophrenia that is quite prevalent in the healthcare space um, or in those who deal with a lot of schizophrenics, um, unfortunately. But you're less likely to be treated for almost any cause, and that includes heart disease, so it includes quite severe things like heart disease and cancer. All right, so here are the references. I'm going to go back now to the start here, and um, we'll talk about some ways you can mitigate uh, your risk uh, of dying early and increase your lifespan. So um, not smoking, that's the biggest one. So if you can not smoke, um, uh, uh, smoking is associated with eight years lost. If you quit smoking, so if you quit smoking after 10 years, uh, you're halfway back. So after 10 years, you're uh, halfway back, halfway healed. Um, and after 20 years of not smoking, you are fully healed. You have the same risk of lung cancer, of uh, cardiovascular disease, of dementia, of COPD, after 20 years of not smoking, as someone who didn't never smoked at all. So your lungs do heal. You know, after 10 years, you're half healed. After 20 years, you're fully healed. And there are benefits to quitting smoking that you can feel, you know, three months after quitting smoking. So uh, uh, potentially, you know, quitting smoking or switching to a patch or a vape pen um, would be an excellent way to increase your lifespan. Suicide, obviously. Uh, don't commit suicide. <laughs> weight, watching your weight um, is important. Um, being active, uh, trying to work uh, and become a valuable member to the community uh, really helps the class issue, especially uh, for men. So, uh, but even for women, uh, working or being volunteering or being active in the community um, really helps uh, your positive and negative, negative symptoms of schizophrenia along with your lifespan. So there's, you know, it's a win-win uh, for yourself and the community around you if you're, if you're active and a valuable member of that community. Uh, social isolation. So there's a, the 50% increased risk of death from socialization. Um, it's interesting having friends. If you can get married, having a, getting married, actually, um, I'll write that down here. Uh, marriage. 
marriage uh, decreases risk of death, risk of death uh, by 50%. And uh, at one point they thought uh, most of that benefit was uh, to, to males, uh, the, the benefits from marriage. But it's now been shown that there is a 50% decrease risk of death if you are married in both men and women. So it's a great idea uh, to partner up. It's a good move financially. Usually, <laughs> I have some uh, problems with how the social um, safety net is structured because sometimes you do get less depending on which country you live in if you partner up. But uh, for most people, uh, marriage is a great thing, and in terms of lifespan and in terms of your symptoms of schizophrenia, it's always a good move. Uh, financially, sometimes it is not as much of a good move, depending on how social assistance is structured in your country. Um, uh, diabetes, again, if you can um, uh, take care of your... Um, Weight and stay active, that helps with the diabetes issue. Uh, risk of dementia. So the risk of dementia is bad if you are on an antipsychotic. It is even worse if you are an, an, on an antipsychotic and on an anticholinergic. Uh, um, so something to help with tremors. Uh, anticholinergics uh, reduce acetylcholine in the brain. So you're not just missing dopamine, but you're missing acetylcholine, and that uh, aggravates the risk of dementia a lot. So if you can avoid taking an antipsychotic, that's good. If you can avoid taking an antipsychotic and an anticholinergic, um, that's even that's that reduces your risk tremendously. Uh, so um, yeah, risk of dementia is really tied in with um, a lack of neurotransmitters in your brain. So if you can keep your neurotransmitters up, uh, uh, that's a big benefit. And if you do have tremors, uh, please take a look at my um, list of ways you can mitigate that. It'll be linked below. You can look up Turkiv Dykinesia, and uh, there'll be a list of things you can take and things you can do that reduce um, tremors without having to take an anticholinergic. All right, so that is the presentation. Uh, uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, as always, all everything I talked about today will be linked in the description. Check out the links, check out my full blog post about improving the outcome for schizophrenia. Uh, and uh, go through that if you're just getting started. But uh, once again, all of the science I've mentioned in this video sh should be linked below um, in, the, in the video description, and you can take that out uh, uh, and look through it um, at your own pace. So thank you very much for watching. Please... Uh, like, share, uh, drop a comment if you're so inclined, and uh, take care, everyone. Thanks for watching.